Welcome back everybody. Kathy Arbor here and today is Mixed Media Thursday. And I have a traceable. This is what the traceable will look like. And I'm going to depend upon um, people in chat to help me figure out what to use. So if you got some ideas and you don't know how they would work out, throw them out there. I'd love to uh, see what I can work out. I'll tell you whether uh, it's the right thing at the right time type of thing, because there are some mediums that don't go on top of other mediums. And we'll see what happens. So let me get rid of my notifications here. And if you were with us last Tuesday, I think I did this on Tuesday. Uh, this was uh, a mixed media watercolor, actually. And so there's watercolor, colored pencil, and a little bit of uh, Posca in this uh, painting. And uh, hey, Dorothy, good to see you. Must be late for you. Are you in bed watching? <laughs> so I thought I would do this one. And it's going to be a little um, uh, barn swallow, I guess you could call it. So they're kind of a, a charcoal gray black. And then they're... Uh, chest area is usually white or a dirty white kind of thing. 11 p.m. here. Huh? I hope you're feeling better. Everything's on the up and up. So I thought I would just, this is going to be totally mixed media. So the background isn't necessarily going to be uh, a realistic background. It may have some uh, texture in there. It may have stamps, uh, pieces of paper. <laughs> it could be all kinds of stuff. And that's what I like to do in mixed media. And I can color, cover some of these areas and then just redraw it. That's no problem. Uh, a lot of times your paint, if you're using a artist grade paint then you're more than likely going to see through it most artist grades is fairly transparent unless you get into say uh, uh, like titaniums and whites like that um, buff some there are some yellows out there uh, that are a little bit on the trend or opal opaque side but me not totally opaque so I am going to do the hollyhocks here uh, I do have some hollyhocks in my garden and they're beautiful uh, this, this first year they bloomed and they're a beautiful magenta and then this beautiful yellow center it's I, I have no idea what the, the name is um, but I really love the bright yellow center on the magenta. It's gorgeous. And then we'll do a little bit of uh, texture maybe in the fence here. So if you guys have any ideas for any of this, uh, make sure to put it in chat and put it in all caps. You're not yelling at me. <laughs> it's just easier for me to see uh, your comments. Uh, legs still poorly, but I'm okay. Okay. Well, I hope that all gets cleared up for you. So, um, now there is a traceable for this for all my members on YouTube and Patreon. Uh, Patreon and YouTube have the same content, if you were wondering. Uh, it's just that some people... Uh, prefer one over the other and uh, so I've got it for both whoever 
whoever uh, wants uh, YouTube, they can watch it on YouTube. But it's the same content on Patreon. So there is this for you. And it's for all levels. So uh, you can download that. It's uh, downloadable and you can resize it also. All right. So I did take out some of these. Um, these are, this one is actually a eco print from my embossing machine where I just put the actual fresh uh, leaves and flowers and then fold it over, run it through my embossing machine and it gives me this beautiful uh, print. So this is actual color from those uh, pieces of foliage and flowers. And there is a, quite a few uh, videos on this. Uh, it's in a pay playlist, jelly plating or jelly printing. And this is also one, but in this one, I added a little bit of ink to the leaves and then just spray it with water. And then you get these beautiful uh, prints. Now I do have uh, also uh, Patreon now has a shop. And so I'm going to be putting up different digitals. So uh, I do have one um, bunch of, I think there's eight digitals of uh, different types of my uh, eco prints. And you can buy that now on uh, Patreon. And you don't have to be a member to buy it. Uh, just go on to my page. You can find my page if you go on uh, my YouTube uh, main channel. You'll see up in the little corner over here um, on the header. Uh, there will be a Patreon link you can go to. And then just press shop and it will bring down the um, products. All right. So if anyone has any ideas, or I will just start doing whatever. So I think, now I printed this out with an inkjet printer. And then I, instead of me tracing it on, I just glued the whole copy paper onto my, uh, this is uh, mixed media paper by Strathmore. Um, visual journal it's called I really love their it's smooth so it's good for watercolor it's also good for all other mediums including drawing and colored pencil so if you are looking for a fairly uh, versatile um, journal I would strongly recommend this one here and you can get it in different sizes some people don't like the uh, the binding on it but I find it's fine um, I usually in this big uh, format I don't typically go into a double because this is big enough for me and if I wanted to do it uh, this way I can just turn my book all right so I will get a put this aside so I don't mess it. Um, I think I'm probably maybe going to put a little bit of, I could get some, um, papers or could even do just regular scrapbook paper also. You know, typically, um, I'm very realistic in my, my uh, drawings and stuff, but you don't have to be, especially in mixed media. So let's see. Let's see what I can find here. I do have some uh, paper here. This is 
scrapbook paper. Great thing to use, especially if you're not doing any scrapbooking now. I uh, love that. Love, love the green and the blue. Um, I think I want to keep it a little bit calm in the background, though. So i thinking probably even that would be probably nice. I'm thinking of the sky. Uh, could even go with something like that too because it's got a little bit of of a foliage look so that's more of the greens in there that's too bright dark too in your face um Even something like that would be nice. So this is what I think about is kind of have an idea of how I want it, but not really. But it's, uh, I kind of go as I, as I paint. But the background... These are, sorry, very old papers of mine. So you're seeing how I work. So I just usually get a bunch of papers out. I take my time. If I don't find something, then I'll go on to maybe an, a different idea. If uh, I gotta find something that uh, kind of speaks to me, if you know what I mean. So it's like when you're leafing through a, a magazine and you stop at a certain page. Maybe the color catches your eye or your interest or an emotion in a face or um, different things like that. And those are the things you should cut out of your book and keep because it drew you to that page. There was something about color combinations of maybe color and composition, maybe um, maybe something you're interested in that month or week or whatever. Uh, but keep them aside because you can come back to them. That's what I like to do is I'll, I have upstairs, I have a box with all these different things in them <laughs> that just kind of get me going. Hey, Susan, Brenda, good to see you. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Never know. Could be interesting. Okay, so I have these scrapbook papers here. And I also have these. I love these. This would probably go really well with this. Um, I think I'm going to put this aside. Do you like that with this? And that's what I like to do. Is I'll match the greens or whatever color is in my background with the other uh, napkins or paint or uh, whatever I've got on my desk, basically. So, and it doesn't have to be cut out uh, perfectly either. So let's take this. I won't need all of it. 
and I may as well use the top and let's put it like what I normally do is I'll rip rip around stuff and if it's kind of rough that's fine so when it's rough your edges are easier to hide than if it was a straight cut okay so like that and we can always um, paint around things with our acrylics or whatever else we're using I'm not going to glue it down right right away, but I will. Let's see. Maybe I'm going to take this edge here. And I'm just going to bring it down just to leave some of that pattern. So it's the same as this over here, but I want to make sure that I'm not covering my pattern too much. Now you could do this uh, before you put down your pattern too, which would probably be a little easier for some, but you know me, do things the hard way. <laughs> okay, that'll work like that. And let's see, we'll put in a little bit of this up here, or we could just do some something else. Let's put a little bit of this down here, though. So, rip, rip, rip. Fold it because that's the only straight edge that I'm going to have. Now, if, and we can layer. Don't be afraid to layer. Even if you're maybe you loved something in the beginning, don't be scared to layer over top of it because sometimes you get great surprises. Okay, like that, and I think I'm going to put a little bit over here. Yeah, maybe like that. Okay, so I'm going to get my matte medium out. I have gel matte medium. This is one of the Canadian uh, brands. Do go through a lot when you play with uh, gluing and collage, that type of thing. Um, hey Colleen! See, if I had that original pen drawing, the first thing I would never do is look through scrapbook paper. <laughs> you just play. You take a photocopy of it. You can always do it again. That's the way I look at it. 
can always be done again. Experiment. Have fun with it. Don't be scared of making a mistake. That's how you learn. That's how we'll never learn anything if we don't make mistakes. Right? I like to put on the back, on the front, and down on the paper. That way it's less likely to uh, buckle on you. And we'll just overlap this. I like gel medium when you're working with papers because there's less water in it. And that way it's uh, less likely to uh, buckle. one down here. So I've already started making my background colors. So I've decided on these colors. So now I can uh, see if I can match them. That's fun too. Sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll have the color in your palette box, but not all the time. I think put, and I can always, always go back over and um, put something else if I don't like it. Experiment. we go. It's the first one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Now, I can uh, either start putting on other stuff or I can use stencils. Um, I even have some cool dragonflies here. I could do that. That'd be kind of cool. I could use a dragonfly on this. I could use parts of this as clouds if I wanted to. So I think right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can find colors within this product line and it's I think I'm going to get craft paint for this because I want to kind of cover up I want it to be opaque so I can cover up the edges of the uh, and I've got a twirly thing here full of paint. Okay. That is pretty, pretty darn close. I'm just putting it up against the bottoms of the let's see that one maybe. <laughs> Hey, Brenda. B3. <laughs> I have G3 and B3. <laughs> That's, I think, oh, so right on. Well, look at that. Winter Blue by Americana. A 
twirly thing. <laughs> I have three of them. Two of them are out here. I'll show you. I'll, can I, uh, I don't think I can. T I'll take a picture. I'll take a picture of my where all my uh, craft paint. I've had these for years. I had them when I had the store. Uh, let's see. See, so there's um, two sides, so you can turn them, and then the other side of this one uh, is reds and oranges and browns, and then this one is blue, and then the other side is greens, grays, that type of thing. And they're great, because then you can... They, they lay, so that's the way they're supposed to lay. And then you can turn them and you can see the double mint twins. <laughs> I don't know if they have them anymore. Uh, they used to. Uh, I got them at Michael's. Don't know if they still have them. They're worth it. Instead of having your stuff out in a cart, you can have it on your table and you just spin it. I love it. All right. So I think I'm going to first do some painting around the edges here. So I'll take out... Uh, This is, I like uh, angled brushes, just so you can get, oh, I better, I better dry it for a little, just a tad. It's pretty wet. Uh, are you, <laughs> yeah, easy, see, easy to see the colors. I imagine you could use it for other things too. Um, storing, I don't know, different things in there. Maybe tubes of paint. You could probably, I don't know, if they would fit there or not. Like your um, artist grade. I like to, well, kind of dry it completely. You know, it doesn't have to be completely. The this paper is fairly heavy weight, so you can throw on a, quite a bit of uh, wet on it, and it's not going to really do too much. But I like to dry it kind of in between, just so that it's not too sopping wet. two cart upside down like Barb Owen does. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Just so that uh, especially with acrylics so if you're acrylics are still damp and you go to try and paint over top of it it's going to lift you're going to lift your last layer you put down all right
All right. So I'm going to just paint in this area. It's not bad. It's pretty, pretty darn close. But I'm going to bring it into that paper also. So it's not just a painted line around the paper's edge. You know what I mean? And you can also do some stenciling on top. Bring that uh, paint like it belongs. Or put some green on there. It's fun to try and match things, and even sometimes, even the uh, pattern on the paper, you can kind of uh, mimic it in a way. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you have similar lines and color, you can pretty well get away with it without having to get too um, precise in everything. Just try and Get as close to the color as possible. That's the main thing, I think. If you can do that, you're well on your way. So I could bring this into here. And we'll put it up along the bird. You might do a little stenciling. So do you guys like mixed media and realism together like this? Or do you like it more abstract? I really enjoy doing it, um, this type of thing. I'll show you, a, I think I have a couple in my book here. So I'm all about detail. I love detail in realism. So that's just part of who I am. So that pretty well is a staple <laughs> in my art but I do like trying you know different things and uh, like the abstract I do struggle a lot with abstract I don't know I think it's because it's lacking <laughs> it's lacking my detail my brain's telling me there's something missing here Where's that detail? Where's that realism? <laughs> and it's and it baffles me. I really struggle. So you guys that do these fantastic uh, paintings of of the doodles with the uh, watercolor and stuff. Oh, I know how. You feel now when you tell me this baffles you or you struggle with this. Yeah, I know exactly how you feel. So I guess it comes down to it's all about what you love. And I guess comfortable with. So all my life I've been basically a portrait artist and um, acrylic painter. I 
I have done a lot of mixed media, though, I must admit. Um, but it's always been more on the realism side of things, so. And that's from um, being taught that in school, too. We never really got into the um, abstract. I'm working on doing more realism in, in work process. Awesome! Always done whimsical because it's easier than realism, but I think I'm slowly learning. Total abstract just isn't my bag, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, every, that's the nice thing about art. There's so many different styles and there's something out there for everybody. That's for sure. Now I'll probably do a little bit of uh, green down here because it would be a little more green in this area. So, but it could be even getting into this darker blue. So let's get a little blue here. It's almost a really dark denim blue, or even that would do. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uniform blue. Colleen, you rock abstract. Yeah, Colleen does. She's got a real knack for uh, all kinds of collage, abstract, um, putting things together that um, may not have anything to do with each other, but it looks right. Colleen, put your uh, channel in so people can check it out too. She, uh, Colleen and Kathy do uh, live streams also on Tuesdays and Tuesday and Thursday, is it? Or no, Tuesday and Wednesday? can't remember. I've kind of been out of the <laughs> out of the loop with summers are really crazy for me because I'm a gardener. I really um, um, what, how could I say this? Obsessed I guess. <laughs> Obsessed gardener. always loved gardening. I remember when I was a kid, I used to do a bunch of gardening. Just love it. I just, that's the type of thing I love. I'm going to mix some of that blue in that and mess it up. On it kind of oh, I might even put some green in there do want um, let's see I think this is gonna be a little bit of blue in there Now you could use smaller paint brushes if you want. Uh, 
uh, Tuesdays and switch each. Oh, that's right. You were on Thursdays, but you switched. That's right. Duh. I should have known that. That's right. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Even just uh, kind of messy looking will do too because you know, we'll probably have some grass in here. We, You could even uh, put in some stencils or uh, anything really just throw it in see what you can make I'm thinking of shadowed areas right now that's why I'm putting in some of this A little bit of this in here. Uh, maybe along the sides. Bring it across. There we go. I can't wait to have my own place and garden again. I'm staying at my daughter's till I get going down here oh yeah I remember <laughs> feeling that way when I was in between places it's like oh you'll get there Brenda don't worry it's nice that you're close to your daughter now and family around okay so there's the background for now I'll be adding to it for sure um, the nice thing about these here is you can add stuff like this this is uh, rice paper and you'll still get a little bit of this uh, showing through when you uh, glue it on. But I don't think I want, I might change my mind. You never know. Um, but we'll see what we can do here. Because I want this to show more about the, the flowers and stuff. So. The um, flowers, I think I will paint because that's the realism in me. <laughs> and they are going to be like, I think I took a picture of them. Oh, great. I just got paint on my phone. Yep. I will show you the flowers. So those are the hollyhocks in my garden. Isn't that a cool color combo? I just love it. And they are that pink. They're really a vibrant magenta pink, hot pink. So that's the, that's the colors that I'm going to be doing. So I do have this luminous rose by Hall. Uh, Holbein and it is luminous so let's try that look at that How, like whoa and I 
have luminous lemon. It's like fluorescent lemon. It's too bad the camera doesn't show you how, like, got to get your sunglasses on type of thing. <laughs> now, this is transparent, though. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get a little bit of titanium white. Got a little bit left in here. And I'm going to mix a little bit. I'll show you first what it's like. So it's very translucent. So you can see the flower, the edge, the all the uh, marks from the drawing it doesn't it doesn't uh, fade out see how translucent it is so to work around that you can put white with it and what happens you'll have to go back over it again but you can cover up those lines And marks a lot easier. And I just like to do this and then I'll go back over it and put that bright pink back in. So just play with it. Let's see, I think that'll be probably. That one's kind of flipped backwards a little bit. So this is just a first coat. And I'm just going to do the flower one at a time. Because if I do two of them, uh, together you'll lose those marks and you're not going to see where all the other lines are going. Now I'm going to just take some uh, plain white and flick it into that. Now this is not, this is titanium white, but it's not the best um, opaque white there is. Uh, sometimes you have to get into uh, gessos if you want to cover it all, or you could even use a gouache. Gouache will uh, usually cover it. All right, so and then just put, and then just brushing inwards towards the center of the flower. with just that pink, a rose, I guess they're calling it. Just pushing it to the center. They do have a little bit of veining in their petals. So if you got streaks, that's even better. That. Okay, and then I'm going to take that bright yellow and a little bit of white, and I'm going to work 
Whew. That is real bright. Wow. That is cool. Love it. pink in there I don't want so we'll just take that out so if it's wet you can still take off that whoops area and just kind of feather it into the pink it does go over top just try and um, do it in the direction that the petals are laying. Like that. I got paint on my fingers and it won't register my fingerprint <laughs> on my phone. Oh, for Pete's sakes. wanted to see what the step um, okay it gets a little bit darker in the center here it's a little brighter so just the yellow in the center here could add some green too and let's get a little bit of green and I want hmm let's do some simoleon green just a bit for now and Just gonna do the center in here. And I'm swishing it into the yellow, just blending it in. Maybe a bit of blue with that green, just to make it a little darker in the center here and a little bit of that green with some of that yellow that yellow is powerful stuff I'm just going to make a few little lines going into the yellow with the green a little bit. Kind of like eyelashes. And then... Some more of that yellow like that. okay so we'll just let that dry and now we'll do this one here Let's do the yellow and the white in the center here. That's so powerful. And that pink and white.
just going around the edge for now. Now this white here, where I've gone over that piece of paper that was there, I'm going to have to put a lot more white there just to cover the uh, pattern on the paper. Now I can still see some of the uh, line work, so you can either uh, leave it like that and um, use it later by either putting colored pencil on top or all kinds of stuff you can do. And I'm just adding a little bit more color as I go, just with the pink. And then you can go in with uh, colored pencil or um, maybe uh, ink I'm just looking at different areas here where I can still see the outline so in some of these areas it would be real dark because it's kind of overlapping. Now when you get into the bottom part, this is when I like to just flick it in like a like you're doing a bunch of eyelashes. I could put some matte medium. If you're finding it's dragging, so it's not going on as smooth, you can just add a little bit of uh, matte medium to your brush. Usually that'll uh, help out. Okay, so what's everybody doing? Are you into books? Are you getting ready for school? Getting the kids ready? Thanks, Brenda. Um, B3 is lucky to have you for a mom. Hope he <laughs> my eighteen year old son just came home from work with my oh no. <laughs> yeah. 
that's the way. It doesn't matter how old they are, they still come home to mom. And they're not feeling well. Okay, a little bit of the green again with the yellow. Right in the center here. It's the darkest. It kind of goes out like a, a star almost. It's a very deep center on these. They're trumpet shaped. Just going to bring this yellow with the white into the petals a little bit right in here. So, mixed media can be a little bit longer process sometimes. I like it. I just like playing with everything. <laughs> uh, I start back to school next week, Thursday, first day of new jobs. So this week I'm playing with my art journals as much as possible. <laughs> you know, new, new uh, endeavors, eh? New job, new people, new students for Oh, uh, you'll, you'll enjoy it, I'm sure. I'm gonna, there's a little area right on the tip here that's a little bit lighter because it's kind of folded over. there. And it can be just a, the slightest difference in color, but it is different because you're going to get a little bit more of a highlight on that part. So you don't have to go crazy with detail, but I like detail, as you know. Now you could uh, cut these out too um, as a collage. It would be a little bit of shine, I guess, here and there. So they're not all going to be completely one solid color. And there's always uh, shadows here and there, especially when they're overlapped. So I can see where they're overlapped here. And I'll just put a little bit of a darker line. Doesn't have to be a lot. Just make them a little bit interesting with the marks. Uh, 
bring it down into there maybe. How it is the saying the in the devil is in the details. <laughs> yep. I just like, I don't know why, I just, I always, ever since I was a kid, I remember um, <laughs> when, it, I think it was one of my first portraits that I decided I was going to do portraits. And I, I loved on Saturday afternoons, um, Sir Graves Gastly was on. <laughs> It was a Sunday or Saturday afternoon horror um, movies. And it was an old werewolf movie. And I remember thinking, oh, I love that. Even then, I loved expression. And that's what I was going to do. So I decided I was going to try to figure out how to draw that. So <laughs> what I did was I stood in front of the mirror in the bathroom and squished up my nose, made a, gra you know, like I was growling, <laughs> and drew my face like a werewolf. That was so funny. I, remember, I still, to this day, remember doing that. And it turned out really well. I must, I, I do remember um, being very proud of how it turned out. And that was the beginning of my art career, I guess. And it was all done in um, an HP pencil. Okay, let's add a little bit of light color in this. So, then, well, let's put that back in there. And then, there's a little one right here, and I think So this is just a little bit of highlight. Be careful not to put too much in. This is a flower here. I do want uh, more of a pinky color, I guess. Make some of those lines. Get the petals. Doesn't have to be real strong, but it's nice to have those lines in. Just gives them a little more 
definition of what they are. And I'm going to bring it into the uh, yellow. Uh, yeah, it was fun. It's funny the different things you remember. Oh, there's a little turnover there. Right here. And a little bit right here. Every uh, Christmas, too, my parents would allow me to paint the front picture window. <laughs> that was so much fun. paint snowmen or Santa Claus or they get me the cheap uh, tempera paints from the store. <laughs> There's a little bit of a turnover right here. Uh. All right. And then I guess I'll just put a uh, bright, let's see what, how this comes up. It's really bright pink in the buds. So I left those white, so those will be fairly easy. And one there. Let's see. That. So that just the tips here. Well, there's another one. This one can be just bright, bright pink. Smooth edge. So I don't have uh, rough edges on their edges of their petals so I want that fairly smooth looking that um, you would never think how that background came out <laughs> oh thanks yeah you just play 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 you can I'll, I'm gonna do some other stuff to it too we'll see all kinds of cool stuff. A little bit more uh, yeah, white on here. Just mixing in with the pink just for the edges there where it might be uh, a little bit lighter because of the highlight maybe. Uh, let's see. This one, I'm going to do them all. I don't know why I, it's just, I usually just do them all at the same time. Get them done. So they're not very hard to do. 
Okay, just one more big one. So this one, um, eh, let's try just putting the... paint alone. Let's see what happens. Let's try another way. It's like I said, experiment. See what happens. Your paint goes quite a ways too. That was just a little dab that I had. And just mix some uh, matte medium, or if you have glazing medium, you could do that. Floating medium. Okay, I'll just take it a little bit of, of the way in because I want, still want those. Uh, streaks in there. Like that. Bit of water on my brush. and then fill it in. But I still like to uh, keep the direction of the petal with my direction of the brush I'm going. Because you do get streaks, so you may as well uh, use that to your advantage and uh, have the streaks representing the little um, veins or whatever they are on the petals fold sometimes they have these little lumps lumps and bumps Okay. It's not looking too bad. Make that into a little bit of a and here is pretty dark because there's that other behind it so it's got a shadow just underneath doesn't have to be too too dark and right in here maybe some right there Like that. <laughs> that yellow is really bright, eh? <laughs> now I might tone it down. We'll see. It's like neon. It's wow. So I can always tone it down with some white.
just bring it, it changes the color a little bit, but still looks good if you let those streaks be brought in. Just helps the um, the shape of the petal be more. Uh, what, what do I want to say? The form is more noticeable then. Uh, if you want a large close-up photos of, I think, 56 flowers book for state flowers in USA, I believe it was a magazine. I chose the first. It was gorgeous close-up photo. Oh, awesome. Okay, so there are some lighter areas here. So I'm going to get a little bit of pink. Right in here. It'll be that fold. You could probably go in with some um, Poscas. I got some yellow on my brush. Uh, better homes and gardens. Yeah, they got nice pictures. Oh, too much. Too much. Uh, let's see. I want that green again with a little bit of I'm going to put a little bit of white in that yellow now. I want to cover up some of that um, tracing. Oh, there's one. I'm running out of paint here. A little bit of white. I think. I 
And then a little bit of white um, on the brush. That's basically a little bit lighter color. Kind of shows that the petal is kind of turning. Let's see in there, it should be darker. There. Looks pretty good. Oh, I missed a spot of uh, background here. Uh, and any more other spots? Let's put a little bit of blue in there too. Right. Now we can do the uh, leaves. So I do have that green that I have out here. And I have uh, mix a little more yellow. So we can mix uh, greens, a little blue, some yellow, white and get different shades of green. So I just dip my brush in the green, maybe uh, the tip in uh, that blue, and I basically let it mix on my page. Maybe a little bit of yellow. That'll lighten some areas. And I, again, I'm going towards the center where the, the rib of the veining is. bit of blue. This isn't um, photorealism at all. It's just a fun mixed media way of painting. Okay. going to do my midrib in a little bit of a lighter color. And you could uh, use Posca markers. Play with it. And this one here, a little bit of white, green, and some yellow on my brush. Let it streak. Kind of 
stay in the uh, from the midrib of the vein out. Think of, of how the leaf grows. And that'll help with the way it looks. So this is just a quick way of doing leaf. And then a light color in the center. Let's make that a little bit lighter green right here so it stands out a little bit. Um, wonder why we buy every color we can find yet mix the color we want. <laughs> it's, it's, we have to have the collection. That's what it is. <laughs> we love our art supplies and we just have to have it. Collect. A little bit of white in there. Maybe even a little bit blue. Let's see. Then right up in here, oh, I missed a, missed one. Well, let's finish the greens. All of us at the craft store, oh, pretty everywhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> so right you just go oh i love that color i gotta have it we all have good intentions it's just uh we always think oh that would look so nice with da 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 and then great intentions on how we're going to use it, but then we just forget. Or there's just so many uh, other ideas we have. As mixed media artists, that's, that's the danger. There's, you got to have all these other things if you're going to be a mixed media artist right <laughs> so you got to try it all and that sucks you in um, yeah Starting out up pretty good. Oh yeah, I, I missed a spot. Need a little dab of this rose color right here. There. 
That's why I like doing mixed medias, because you get to try it all. Who else loves mixed media? What's your favorite thing to do with mixed media? I think I started mixed media doing journal pages. Um, and basically, it was just to play with stuff to see what how it worked, what you could um, put with it, type of thing, and. Just expanded from there. Okay, let's do that. A little bit dark. dark in here. A little bit of separating the painting area. Okay. Now you could actually, if you wanted to, not do the bird and just cut a bird out. I could do this in um, watercolor if I wanted to. I could do it colored pencil. Um, many, many different ways of, of uh, playing with this. Um, I think I'm going to get brown for the fence. Brown or white and gray? Hmm. Gray might be kind of cool. Maybe a bit of brown. Raw umber. Let's see. Um... Light buttermilk, maybe. Yeah, let's try that. A little bit of um, light buttermilk. What's this one? Slate gray. So I'm going to try something different. Experiment. want a fairly big brush. Bigger than I have. Let's see. That one. I guess this will do. Nope. Okay. So let's paint this gray. A light coat, not too heavy. Just enough to color the area. I still see my lines. thundering out. I doubt if you guys can hear that. Hopefully everything stays on. <laughs> so 
hogs aren't going to like that. Across here. So I'm just putting a base coat. I'm not even worried about how the streaking's going or anything like that. Just want a, a light coat. I'm going to go right over the bird feet. We'll put those back in later. And try to go around that rose. Or not rose. Looks like a rose though. The bud of the hollyhock. So this slate gray I'm using and then I'm gonna use a very stiff brush probably and put some buttermilk on it okay well that should have gone down there well Put this in here, part of the fence. Right there. All right. Now, what I'm going to do. I want this fairly dry. My brush. I might have to get my other brush out. Something stiff. This one maybe. This is a bristle brush. So it's dry. And I'm just going to tap the edge. And lightly. Very light. Go up and down. I can take gray and go back over top too. Now the inside here be a little different color because it's the side of the and the, and um, Okay, it's a little bit. The gray coming off. Just the very tip of my of my um, brush. And then I can add a little bit of that blue with the gray. Darken it a little bit. And just go along the side here. Just a little bit different than the other colors. Okay. Um, 
little bit of this. And I'm just going to speckle on the top here because that would be the top part of the the wood you're looking down on so it wouldn't have lines in it. Now I'm going to lighten a little bit of that with a uh, white, my uh, buff color, or what was it called, called again? Light buff, light buttermilk with some white. Make it a little bit, go back over it a little bit more. Take some off, and I can go back down with that a little bit of white. Don't go over on the side here though because that's the side profile of the plank of wood. Okay. Maybe well, let's put a little bit of white and white and buff and Maybe it was painted at one time and the paint's kind of wearing off. So it's a little bit on the rough side. Okay. Put a little bit of this uh, bluish gray color on the side here. Just put a little bit on the speckles on the top. It's in the prompt games. Oh, really? Yeah, I think I started in prompts too. Um, because it was new to me, even though I went to art school, we didn't do mixed media when I went to school. It was very traditional. Okay. Again. Bit of dark. It's just basically going in one direction with your colors and lightly putting down. streaks. And just keep doing it until you like it. This is the most forgiving way of doing wood. Just got to remember to keep it light. A little bit more light.
that. And then that lighter color. Of blue. A little bit of pouring out there so you just go in the direction of the panels too so now this is uh, top part of the side so you would see a little bit more highlight on there There are so many kinds of wood too, rough, open grains, spine grains, hard to go wrong. Yeah, exactly. And you, if if it's still wet, you could even take a, pit, a pin or a, uh, something and scrape into it, you know. Just play. Play, play, play. Um, let's do... I need to get a little bit of a edge on here, though, so we can see where the side is. Doesn't have to be a lot, but in here. And then we can um, take some gel medium, a little bit of that blue, and make a glaze kind of thing. And, oh, got green in there. Try that again. That medium. I'm running out of spots here on my tray. And then, not enough. So this would probably have a little bit of a shadow in here. Same with here. And here. Now it's the same color back here. So what I'm going to do is darken this. Okay. 
so it shows up a little bit. Oh, the ding could be a warning. I guess I should look. That was my phone. We're having a storm. Let's see. Severe thunderstorm warning in Sogging Shores, Concordon, South Bruce. Yeah, we're in a severe storm watch right now. I doing that there. the bird would be fairly dark. Right here. Just tap a little bit more. Right along there would be dark. Okay. Um. Okay. So let's see what else can we do here? Little bird. Let's do the bird. So he's going to be um, white and grays. So a little bit of white, a little bit of uh, buttermilk. Going down to here. And into his neck here. Some um, white patches. And a little bit of more of a buttermilk color. Actually, it does get into kind of a grayish tone. So I'm going to put a little bit of gray on my brush and right under here, a little bit more gray. And this is very fairly gray here because it's right underneath them so it would be shadowed. So you kind of want to uh, have lots of streaks. In your uh, paint. And a little bit of gray in the in here a little bit. Could almost go into the blue gray too.
just sweep it make a lot of strokes this would be the uh, brightest area right here so the white is what you would use in this area did you say what kind of bird uh, I think it's a barn swallow I do need some dark almost black let's see here Payne's gray uh, I could go Payne's gray they're kind of a bluey gray color or black they have a sheen to them um, I'll put it back right here I guess see what see what we can do Yeah, this should work. So I'm going in the direction of the f of the feathers. I'm not going to get really detailed with the feathers. I, I could spend hours and hours on the feathers, but I think we'll just do a fairly simple rendition of this one not too complicated and I'm, I'm leaving uh, brush strokes purposely so there's some dark areas light areas And it's still wet so I can blend or add or uh, let's see let's do what's or I could add pen or marker to this too um, but I'm just gonna make it thick a fairly thick consistency in the areas I want to be uh, really dark color um, it's actually a little area here. This is fairly dark here. This is why I like this uh, type of brush and the uh, beak is also dark so we'll have to highlight that the eye is dark too you can barely see the the eye but we'll uh, add a little bit of colored pencil Probably. Oh, don't want that on my. It's fairly dark underneath the eye. Kind of gets a little bit lighter with the uh, I don't know the highlights I guess you know how the birds feathers kind of iridized <laughs> in a way they shine certain colors like um, peacocks and uh, hummingbirds that type of thing they have that I don't know their special name for it So I'm just trying to keep the brush strokes to represent how the feathers are. 
let's see, and then the, while it's wet, I guess I should put in some, just a little bit of gray, maybe some areas here. More or less separations where the feathers are on the wing. And of dark in here. I missed a spot for the paint background. A little bit. Oh, a different color right in here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white. Same with here. This is fairly simple one to do. So I'm basically mixing on my page. It's a little bit of I want those um marks to show. And this is fairly dark in here. And right down there. And then just flick it. Good color choice for the bird. Thanks. And that little piece, this is part of the background here that I forgot. I think we could put some there too, just to even up some stuff. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit, I should, actually should have a brown, a little bit. I need a little bit of raw sienna, just a smidge. Come on, we 
know there's just a smidgen in there. We'll put it on the paper. There we go. I don't need much. Just a smidgen right in here. And then I can even lighten that more. Just right in here. Just ever so light. Okay, and I gotta put some feet in. Well, I guess do that with a marker or something, right? All right, let's dry that and we'll see what else we can do. Now this is uh, uh, craft paint, so we can use colored pencils on it. Uh, let's see. I want a white. This is the fun part I like. Again, detail. Can't help it. So uh, birds have this little eyelid. And let's put a little bit of bit of marks on the uh, wing. That. And a little bit of uh, difference in highlights. Just smidgens of marks. Nothing major. But you gotta keep in mind how the feathers are laying. Uh, and the shape of the head. Okay, and then a black. Dark, dark around the edge. And the inside. That. And then I can even make some marks with the black in the areas that's the darkest, which would be right around his eye. Going into his top part of his beak a little bit. And you can put some in the top of the head too. Here and there. It just gives it a different um, texture. More marks. More depth, basically. I like playing with this. And you can go into your... other areas too. 
where the feathers might be uh, fuzzed out a little bit. Uh, maybe in here a little bit. Shadows, maybe, where the feathers overlap. I know I'm getting crazy with the detail. Uh, a little bit there, a little underneath. That. Oh, yes, it's feet. So you're only seeing uh, a couple toes. Not see, because this body is covering most of them. Uh, so you're seeing one right there, and then one right there. Then I'm going to take some and just scribble some um, squiggles on the top part here. And along the edge, you're going to make a rough edge. here. Make some black squiggles because those would be dark. And then you could take some areas and make more squiggles, lines, broken areas that Maybe the paint's chipping away. This is the fun part. I like doing this. Uh, let's see. Along the edge here, maybe there'd be a little bit. Make some uh, lines. Don't do a whole lot. You can get carried away and mess it up, but just play. Play. And then you can do that also with the white. You can um, increase the light. Highlights somewhere. Maybe there's, I could get a marker out. Let's get Posca out. There might be some areas on the top here. Uh, Highlights, a little highlight in the eye of the bird. Do you think the one front flower would cast a big shadow on the fence? Maybe, but it's up to you. Uh, probably. Yeah, it could, depending on which way the, the uh, sun's shining. Be definitely darker down here. Good call. So you could take a little bit more of that dark blue.
put some shadow in here. That's why I like you guys being here. I could even go darker, maybe. Oh, I picked up some black and some. A Payne's gray. Could even go darker actually. Right in here. The fence would be right there. You could. And just light, I put a light uh, coat right in here on the fence. Doesn't have to be a lot. Like that. You could do that with a leaf too. Now you got me doing them all. <laughs> so depending on, you know, how how far they're um, standing away from it, if they're real close, your pattern of the shadow would be not quite as uh, big farther away it is, the bigger the pattern, the closer, the smaller. And let's see, maybe let's put this here. And you could have Now you could do, do this with a colored pencil too, but you could have a, uh, little bit there. And it comes forward quite a bit. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, does. It makes a big difference. Depends how much, you know, you want to do in it. It does. It, it will make a big difference, definitely. Again, you're getting into more realism. <laughs> I like. All right. Um, all right. So there's that. So I've you could do uh, now. This is mm, doesn't look that shiny, so that's surprising to me. Let me see if that whole bind is uh, easy to color over. Usually, uh, it's it's a little more difficult. 
not bad. So that's good. Wow, it is just pouring. It's this black. Hope we're not getting tornado warnings. We've gotten a lot this year. We don't typically get tornado warnings in our area. It just brings that out more. This is a black cherry, I think. Yeah. Just wanted something a little darker, but A little darker along the edge there. That. Might have been someone else that was. Uh, haven't been haven't you been dry for a while Kathy actually uh, in the spring we had a real dry spell but um, this month or the end of last month actually wasn't too bad And we seem to be getting quite a bit of rain um, just the past uh, week. I got paint all over my... <laughs> Isn't that typical? All right. Um, so yeah, I could go on for hours doing this type of work. Now, let's look at this background. Do we want to push it back a little bit? We could. And all you have to do is either put a little bit of a wash, and you can do that in um, white. You could do a stencil over top. You could sponge. Um, or just smear it. Let's see, if we were going to Let's try Sometimes it's fun just to take some white And then 
take a stencil. Let's do this one. And wipe away before it dries too much. Or a baby wipe will work too. Or you could also sponge in areas too. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Holding breath. <laughs> I could even out areas by taking where's my sponge? By taking that blue again that we used, going back in. It's just fun to play. And you could do any of the uh, background colors you, you want. Add a little bit to this. Yeah, I like it. Doesn't that, it, and it can be just very subtle. Uh, <laughs> let's do a little bit of white. And right in there. Let's see what it does. Yeah. There. Yeah, I like it. And get over there. Yeah. <laughs> you did? Good thing. <laughs> you never know. You never know how it's going to turn out. It's fun. Well, I love this stencil, too. What could we do with this? Um, we could. Ooh, wait a minute. Uh, do I want that one? Thinking. Dark, light. I'm going to go dark. Dark blue or right over top of. All kinds of stuff here. Uh, 
All right, not bad. Again, you just got to play, right? Let's see what happens. Yeah, I like it. I think that needs to be more right in there. You could have done that in uh, uh, a raised kind of paste too. Just color your paste. And then maybe a little bit more blue down here. Darken that area up. Sometimes I like to edge. Not bad. Now I could put a B there too. Let's see, white. I'm going to put some high highlights on some of these here. There. Doesn't take much. Maybe. This a little bit of highlighting there. Now it all depends what you know, you don't have to do this. I just like to fiddle <laughs> basically some I guess I don't need to do a whole lot here because it's covered could put a little bit in here though these have to ask my uh, you like highlights Kathy you know I love shadows <laughs> no I like shadows too they both kind of go together don't they one has to um, be represented for the other one to work Just kind of have to play, play. Uh, if that, it means there is light. I have to shrink what 
that means. <laughs> A little birdie doesn't have shadow. No, not really. Well, he does a little bit, but not a whole lot. I think it looks pretty good. So now I'll probably um, sit back, take a look at this tomorrow, and decide, is that it? A lot of times I do that. I don't um, necessarily, unless it's a drawing, say it's done. Um, I may end up wanting more layers on it. Um, let's see. Like this one here. So before I, I didn't have these on, it was just the girl. And then I decided to put those on and it brought it in more depth. So you just you kind of have to take the jump <laughs> and try stuff. Uh, this one I put paste on, just another layer on top. Um, this one's kind of flat. It's all done with, um, different, I think there was stencils, uh, scrap of paper, tissue paper, stamps, and, um, napkins. <laughs> There's a Halloween one. That was fun. That was done at, uh, from Colleen's. <laughs> It was a prompt. Uh, I love this one. So, like, there is a little advertisement in <laughs> in one of the uh, telephone books. So I cut it out and made it into a paper <laughs> advertisement. Uh, what else do we have here? Those are strictly just... There's another one, um, magazine drawing. There's uh, actual leaves glued on here, a piece of ribbon. This one is uh, actual leaves that were painted. Stenciling, there's a bit of uh, texture paste. Stenciling, there's some, looks like, some type of uh could have been even newspaper but yeah you just have to play 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 it's so much fun there so that's it for my little mixed media adventure <laughs> so i hope you'll uh give it a try the Downloadable is already in the memberships, um, in the community page in the membership or the on the Patreon. So you can um, download that and uh, see what you can do with it. Yeah, the spooky pages. I love those. We got to do some more of those, Colleen. They were fun. All right. So if you have any questions... Uh, I can either ask now or leave them in the um, comments below. Um, yes, thumbs ups would be awesome. Uh, I know I don't get a whole lot of viewers. That's why I'm eh, kind of hesitating about doing lives. I'm not sure if it's too difficult for you guys a lot or I don't know. I don't know. I, I just don't get it. <laughs> Maybe it got any suggestions or um, help me out. Uh, what you think 
needs to be done or something I'm doing wrong, let me know. Because it, it does affect me uh, as far as wanting to do stuff. If nobody's, if I can't get enough people, I may as well go back to uh, videos. So, well, I think the storm's over. So I will let you guys go unless you... I don't get it either. Yeah, I know. It's weird, eh? Same with Lena. Fantastic artist. She doesn't get all that many either. I can never figure out what people want. Yeah, right, Colleen? I just don't get it. Although I, I must admit, there, I think that new um, Canadian bill that went out for YouTube where they have to show so much Canadian content and all that stuff. I think it is uh, really um, affecting channels because they're throwing out, they're throwing Canadian content out to people that aren't interested. So they're not, you know, if they're not being watched and they're throwing this all out, that affects your um, suggested videos and your um, algorithm a lot. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So the only thing I've heard that um, from one of those, uh, what is it? One of those channels that helps you with your algorithm and all that stuff. I can't remember the name of it. But they did say that uh, thumbs and um, actually putting a comment in the comment section is is a big one now so when you're doing lives most people don't comment because we've been commenting in the chat right so i think people want spend sped up videos most oh really you think so my do okay susan have a fantastic weekend um, uh, took me so long she hung up oh oh no <laughs> oh well you can call her back yeah so I don't know a uh, bunch of us have been talking about this and trying to figure out uh, ways to get our views back up like it's crazy You, you don't, yeah, see, I like long videos, but Dee Dee never has that issue with lots of viewers, but I think that's rare. Uh, yeah, that's rare, but you know what? That's a social, social time for a lot of people. And that's what I find is uh, you get a, a community going too, and it's very social. She has very social streams so interaction with the the uh, the people and the giveaways all the time that keeps people coming um but you know just keep t i love doing this uh, sellers are on YouTube win over actual art. I agree. It is very social. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, six months from now, they're going to change the darn algorithm again. And then we're all back in the same boat again. That's the that's the frustrating part. You finally get going, and then they change it again on you. Uh, I 
think people want easy journal type stuff. The question is, do you want to learn something or talk? Yeah, very true, Susan. Very true. Oh, is she? Um, yeah, about the easy stuff, that's very true. I think there is more um, crafters or makers, I guess they call them now, than uh, fine artists. There's more people wanting to do the, just have fun um, crafting and, and um, junk journaling and stuff like that. Whereas uh, these people that are more into the technical uh, part of learning art, there's less people that are watching that. People want both. Susan, it's hard to do it all. Yeah. It is very hard. Um, and you know what? I find, I found, especially this past year, I think, I've noticed as an artist, I'm not doing what I want to do as an artist, creating and developing as an artist. I'm looking at what other people are doing and what they want and that's more like selling you know I it brings me back to when I had the the store where you had to do that you had to see what the market wanted and do that or you wouldn't sell anything right well that's what I feel like I've gotten back into and I don't like it I want to grow as an artist and show what I'm doing but I don't know if many people are interested in that. Uh, peop, uh, but we can do both and meld the two. Yeah, it's just the right, you got to find the right uh, combo, right? The right way of doing things. And you can't please everyone all the time. You're always going to have your haters. You're always going to have your... Um, people that are uh, loyal, um, <laughs> it doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> That's a good point. You need to do what makes you happy. Yeah, exactly. And I find uh, I got caught up in that grind of searching to see what everyone else was doing. Uh, like the, uh, what do you call it? Um, What's the trending thing? Well, then I lose my own way of doing art and what I like to do. So, and there are some um, fantastic artists out there that have managed to find a way of doing their art and they're just showing what they're doing and they have huge audiences. And I think um, a big part of that, um, they all do videos. And they're not long. They're maximum 45 minutes. Um, that's the longest one. Most of them are half an hour to 20 minutes, maybe. Um, a lot of them are sped up a bit. But, uh, yeah. And they don't show them everything. Uh, some art channels are way more social than art. Not referring to Dee Dee because she makes all kinds of art. Yeah. Yes, videos win over lives. Yeah. So, and that's what I used to do is all, all uh, video, not lives. And then... Uh, they were a lot shorter too, right? But um, I know if I do that, it's going to have a big effect um, 
when I first do it. There's gonna I'm gonna lose a lot of people, probably. And but Uh, I don't know. Do I take that chance? I don't know. But then I can always do lives on my memberships too. Which, you know, I want to get that going because that's an income for me, which I need. Uh, people want instant art like Instagram, TikTok. Yeah, you're right, Colleen. They do. Everything is instant. And do you find there's very little loyalty? Um, even as a, um, a community, the, the loyalty isn't very high. You have some real loyal people, but most of them will drop you in a hat. Like, it's not like real life at all. And I guess that, to me, I'm older than you, but to me, I'm used to that loyalty of friendship, and it's hard when I don't see it. <laughs> it's not like it used to be. That's a right. Oh, boy. Yeah, so I don't know. I... I not sure what I'm going to do, but I, this year's been kind of disappointing, I guess, to me. Um, I've tried all different ways and I don't know. I just don't think, uh, wow, there's so many factors. And who can figure out YouTube? Like, I think it's kind of, if you're a, one of the lucky ones that the algorithm picks up and throws you out there, then yay, <laughs> you got it. I feel the same way as you, with YouTube. Yeah, it's crazy. But I don't know. I, I know myself, though. If I were to quit YouTube, I probably wouldn't do a whole lot of art. I do it because I like to teach. Because I like to show um, how to do things. And I like the interaction too. Like everybody loves to um, get comments. and Because um, you feel appreciated, right? And if you're, if I don't have a, a arty group here where I live. There's no scrapbook places. There's no art stores. <laughs> like, so, I don't know. I, I'm kind of in a dilemma what to do. But I guess we all go through that on YouTube. Um, how many uh, videos have you seen that? Um, I'm quitting YouTube. And, you know. So I guess it's, you know, what are you doing it for? Are you are you doing it for the joy of it? Or are you going to be doing it because you want to get up to 100,000 or something like that? I do it for the joy. But it it's a bonus if I get positive feedback. And I, I think that's what I'm missing. Um, uh, the numbers are... are going down and down and down. <laughs> There's, yeah, there is a lot of competition. None of that here either. If I just do a YouTube search for mixed media, will it pull your name, Kathy? Um, there's a lot of mixed media artists out there. Yes, I have taken breaks from YouTube after cutting down to once a week. I was happier. Yeah. Does mixed media need to be next to your name, maybe? Uh, no, I don't think so. 
Um, that's not how the algorithm works. The algorithm is all about um, your thumbnail, number one, is a big one, and how you name your videos. Kind of got like uh, clickbait. You got to get someone to click on that video. So attractive looking videos. But then, you know, we're in a very small niche on YouTube. Um, art community is very small. So you got to remember that too. Um, yeah, well, I guess I'm done rambling on. <laughs> ranting to you guys <laughs> sorry to <laughs> spill it all on you <laughs> but uh, uh thanks for being here to listen but uh yeah we'll see see what happens i don't know still thinking about it uh yep i just searched and it was right there it's the title yeah Yeah, the titles are the big one. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'll let you guys go. And thanks for being here. I appreciate it. And uh, well, I'll probably see you on Tuesday. I'm going to work on it, Kathy. <laughs> okay. Let me know what happens there. <laughs> Give me some tips. <laughs> All right. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody, and you know, all the Canadians out there. Have a happy uh, uh, holiday weekend, and we'll see you uh, Tuesday. Bye for now.